What's the word, y'all? Today we're talking about award voting. Um, it is a there's a major problem in the sports world, and I'm just gonna talk about the NBA. I have literally no idea how NFL voting goes or any other major sport. I only know about basketball. I, that probably should change. I should probably diversify my p- portfolio a little bit. But it's what I know and love. All right. So the way things work, if you did not know, there is a select number of media members that get a ballot every single year. Then they get to vote on their MVP, all the major awards, um, all NBA teams, all rookie teams, all the uh, above. Right. And it's just media. It's just media related. And it's coming to light now. The reason I'm talking about it now is because it's on my mind. Because after LeBron James got his win against the Denver Nuggets, he was asked about the MVP award. And, you know, Giannis was announced yesterday or a few days ago. And LeBron said he was pissed that he only got 16 out of the 101 first place votes. It kind of makes sense for his standpoint. But he also went on to talk about all the inconsistencies when it comes to the voting. And this is something that NBA fans have talked about for a long time. But it's, it's really bothering me right now. And that's why I turned on the camera. Because the NBA released the actual ballots today, and when I was looking at them, I was upset. LeBron talked about how the 2012, the year that he probably should have won Defensive Player of the Year, Marcus Saul won. And shout out to Marcus Saul, man, one of my guys. But he also made All Defensive Second Team that year, and it's one of the most inconsistent things ever. How are you going to tell me he was the Defensive Player of the Year, but he wasn't even the best defending center in, in the league? What's, what, what decision does that make? So stuff like that has happened all the time. And the reason there's a major problem here is because there are some people that get these ballots, these media people that don't take it serious enough. There are people that I respect, like Zach Lowe is a guy that though I do not agree with every vote he's given over the course of these whatever many years, I know for sure that Zach Harper, or not Zach Harper, I guess Zach Harper's cool too, Zach Lowe puts together the time to come out with a ballot where like if you question him, why did you have this guy, he would have a logical reason for it. And it's not the case with everybody. There are people like low-level media guys that somehow get a ballot and just screw up everything. And the reason why it's a problem because there are financial incentives for a lot of these players to make an all-NBA team, to win this award, this award. You make an all-NBA team, you can qualify for a Supermax. And there are media people out there that will throw their vote away. And today I want to talk about some of those inconsistencies because, man, does it really bother me. But let me let you know that uh, there is an episode of my show, The Real, this that dropped yesterday. I sat down with John Morant. It was a fire interview. So um, I recommend you watch that. I'll put the link in the description. Go show some love. Let them know that you're from here. Okay. Let them know that uh, these boys, we, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we respect each other. We support each other. So, yeah, the NBA, here it is. NBA Communications. I think it's really funny. We got the NBA. We have the G League. We have the WNBA. And then the 2K League thing is here. I want to open that up in a different tab because I'm very curious to – Huh. I'm that. Oh, my God. Big time trade. Season two MVP. My mom and that man traded to the Kings guard. Bro, I have a Kings guard hat. Okay. All right. Back to here. These were released the 19th, and I think today is the 19th, so we finally got the the voting. So the way I've been doing things is looking at, like, the voting. They overloaded the site. Oh, my God. Don't tell. I just want to record my video. No. We overloaded the site. Okay. Um, wow. So though the site is down, Twitter is forever, and people got screenshots, which is amazing. Shout out to Twitter for being great and terrible at the same time. What we're looking at now is a defensive player of the year selection. As you can see, all of these names are here. These are some of the people that get votes, right? We have people from Turner. We have people from The Athletic, ESPN, NBA, all these guys, right? People from different little small publications, Detroit News, um, Miami Herald, Herald. So on and so forth. But as you can see, this is Defensive Player of the Year. As you know, Giannis won the award. He kind of ran away with it. So one vote doesn't really matter. But let me show you. We got a group of Giannis's up top. Makes sense. Giannis deserved the award. We got a Rudy Gobert. I'm not going to be mad that you voted Rudy Gobert. That's cool. Giannis's Anthony Davis's. And then right here, Joe Cowley from the Chicago Sun-Times throws his vote away completely as he votes for Patrick Beverly, ladies and gentlemen. Patrick Beverly. Beverly, Joe Cowley is fooled. He, oh, he, he's just been fooled. There is no way in the world you can tell me and give me an explanation to why Patrick Beverly deserved Defensive Player of the Year. I would love to sit down and talk with him. Please give me your reason. Please give me your explanation to why Patrick Beverly is the Defensive Player of the Year. There is nothing you can say that will make sense. 
But again, this doesn't really matter because Giannis running away with his war, but this guy right here is bad. And the fact that he has the war that tells me a lot about the Chicago Sun-Times. He is your best, your best sports reporter slash writer, and this is what he thinks? This is also the guy that told Bulls fans months ago that be prepared for another year of Jim Boylan being your head coach because the Reinsdorf family has told me, this is him, he has told me, they have told me that they don't want to pay another coach. And then, boom, Jim Boylan gets fired, and now this guy's sitting there with pie all over his face, looking like a clown. So he votes for Patrick Beverly as defensive player of the year. But it's not the only thing he had done. He is also, out of the 101 people that sit in a ballot for rookie of the year, Joe Cowley is the only guy to vote Zion to the first team. The only guy. Preventing Ja from being one of the few unanimous rookie of the years. But again, it doesn't really matter because Ja ended up winning the award. But... Imagine if we had a close race and this guy has an award and he, he he has a vote and he throws it to Patrick Beverly for defensive defensive player of the year. If we have a close vote for a rookie of the year and boom, he throws it away. I just I don't understand how a guy like this who has continuously shown that either he's not watching basketball or he does not give a damn. The NBA allows the Chicago Sun-Times to give him a vote. The Chicago Sun-Times is huge. You're trying to tell me there's not another reporter that we trust more with an NBA ballot? Because I know for sure Joe Cowley is not watching basketball if Patrick Beverly is his defensive player of the year. I unblocked him uh, just now because I want to see if he has explained himself on Twitter. Remember that debate on who won the 2017 Jimmy Butler trade between the Bulls and the Timber Puppies? Oh, my God. This guy is so lame. Oh, my God. Uh, Jimmy whooped both their behinds. And the reason why he's doing this is because he also gave Jimmy Butler a, a, a MVP vote, a third vote for uh, MVP. And, again, you remember that the MVP award is for the regular season. Though Jimmy Butler has looked amazing and he is a, a great leader, You, he is not the third best MVP voting. Is there anything else that this guy has tweeted? Didn't have my first place vote, long live the king. He also voted for LeBron, but I'm not mad at somebody for voting for LeBron. That's not a big deal. It has to be other things in here. Oh, my God, the site is back up, so I can actually show you. So here we go with Rookie of the Year. As you can see, Zion ended up getting that one vote, and I already showed you who that was. Okay. But when you see it on paper and you see all of the Morant's jaw and you see the one guy here who had jaw second and then Kendrick Nunn third is actually insane. But it goes on. It's not just him. If we go over to most improved player, Brandon Ingram ended up winning it, um, barely beating out Bam Adebayo with the first place votes by just a few. But if you go down here, you're like, okay, who has some other votes? Uh, um, see a guy like Christian Wood had a all, he had a first vote. So let's go see who voted for Christian Wood. Home, you trying to tell me a guy that writes for the Detroit News voted Christian Wood? I'm shocked and appalled. Huh, very interesting stuff. No biases in this whatsoever, huh? This is where things get really interesting. We're talking about defensive teams here. If we go down this list, there is a few players that you like, how the heck did this player get a vote? James Harden got a, a first-team vote along with Luka, and we know though James Harden is a definitely an improved defender from when a couple years ago everybody's making fun of him being a bad defender, he's definitely improved from then. He's definitely not the best of one of the top two defending guards in the entire league. He got a vote. So let's go see who that was from. Here James Harden is right here. Huh, a guy from the Arizona Republic. And if you did not know, James Harden went to Arizona State. N not biased at all. There's no biases in this one, but we just think me me at the Arizona public think that the best player to go to a school in Arizona deserves to be on a defensive team. He also voted Damian Lillard as a defensive player. So this guy what doesn't watch basketball whatsoever. So cross him out, take his vote away. And somehow we get Luca. This guy I don't know who he is. He writes for the Newsday. I don't know what that is, but th there's something going on here. He gave Anthony Davis a Giannis a nod. That makes sense. Drummond somehow gets one. Okay. Um, Luca Ben Simmons is right. Then he gave one to Porzingis, Hassan Whiteside, Russell Westbrook, and Cal Lowry. How? How does this guy, Greg Logan, get a vote if this is what he's doing with his vote. I don't understand it. And then lastly, we get to the rookie voting. 
up top, I cannot complain about anything up here. I, I thought that rookie Voden was fine. I'm very confused on how RJ doesn't make it over like a T Terrence Davis got a bunch of votes. And I like Terrence Davis, but personally, RJ probably deserved to be there. Somehow we had a situation where Cody Martin got a vote. Cody Martin. Cody Martin got a vote. Cody Martin averaged like four points per game his rookie season on a very you know, a pretty bad team. And the guy that did it was Seku Smith from the NBA.com. This is the guy y'all giving a vote to from the NBA? He put Cody Martin as a guy. I don't under I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And that's just a few of the inconsistencies throughout the entire thing. And we see it every single season. Every single season. When LeBron was close to winning a unanimous MVP, there was somebody from the New York Times or some New York publication gave a MVP vote to Carmelo Anthony. Why? Because he didn't want LeBron to be unanimous. And this is not about LeBron. That's just the one that's on top of my head. But there, just, there are people that have votes that don't deserve and I know there are plenty of great reporters and media people that care about the game of basketball that care about the votes that will really take it serious that's it that's my rant um Joe Cowley just got blocked again I just had to do that before I, I got out of here I refuse to see his tweets on the timeline just really just really really bad